I wonder what comes after the basic logics. How do I? WASD to move. Arithmetic and the memory. Goodness me. Memory. I'm not sure what the thing is properly called. In Minecraft, you would call it a T flip flop. <laughs> I think that's capable to retain its state. Uh, given a uh, momentary signal or temporary signal. So I would expect circular dependency, delayed lines, odd tricks, bit inverter. Hmm. But I think I should probably rather start with arithmetic, with the arithmetic path. So let's go that way. Binary eraser, double trouble odd number of signals with a question mark unlocks something unknown well let's not unlock anything unknown yet let's start with a binary racer this level is my favorite pastime converting decimal into binary under time pressure <laughs> no not under time pressure come on i can convert decimal to binary and oh no oh no Toggle the bits in the level panel, so they add up to the decimal number in question. Okay. Oh no, this actually is a race. See? Let's, uh, let's recall the algorithm for doing that. Oh, that's, no, that's such a pain though. I mean, it's honestly easier, especially given this, because there is, of course, an algorithm that uh, uh, that uh, involves div mod, right? Where you just take a remainder, the remainder of division by two, and use that. Uh, but I do not expect to be able to carry it out even remotely effectively. Uh, without notepad which I do still have but I think it's literally gonna be easier to just uh, yeah with these just um, see how much I'm missing start with the largest one and then proceed I think I think that works right yeah that works so long so long as it fits it must be there so let's try what is 1 in binary? It's 1. Submit. What is 2 in binary? It's 2. What is 3 in binary? It's 3. What is 13 in binary? Well, 13 is going to be 8 plus 4 plus 1. Submit. 6. Let's go. 11. 8 plus 3. Submit. 12. Uh, 8 and 4. 1 again. Wait, did I... Oh. I'm now under more time pressure, am I? 14, submit. 22. Now that's 24. 22. 21. No problem. What is 2? That's 2. What is 4? 4. 19. 16 plus 3. 31. Oh, that's everything. Yes. What is 3? Submit. 2. 37. Goodness me. Uh, 36. 37. 62 is almost everything. 32 is just 32. 7 is all, everything. 38 is 32 plus 6. 42 would be 40 plus 2. 38 is 32 plus 6 again. I think this, they are for some reason repeating. 18. 18. What's 18? 16 plus... Yes. Oh, that's 28. I reached level 4. Goodness. I... Yeah, I, I made 28 while I actually needed 18. Uh, off by 10. Recap. There's exactly one way... Yes, of course. There's exactly one way to write each number in binary. Value of each digit is always double the previous... Well, yes, that is very basic. This is a very basic fact about binary representations. 
that much I am thankfully aware of. Double trouble. Because we are so technologically advanced, we have machines fold our socks. Unfortunately, the circuits that detect sock pairs broke on the machine. Uh, that's unfortunate. This level has four inputs. Output when two or more of them are green. When two or more of them are green. Well, that's an interesting input sign. An interesting input graphic. By the way, I didn't I didn't notice that this background seems to change. I'm not sure if it means anything or if it, if it's changing between maybe levels, uh, by which I mean, you know, these. Uh, all of them. Yeah, see, it's it's different here, and it's. I think it was also different here. Yeah. See? Different pattern on the background. Okay, so tip, don't overthink this level. I need to Is it at least two or is it was it at least two or was it two? No, don't view solution. View log. Continue. When two or more of them are green. So I need at least two. Huh. Huh. I mean, there's an easy, immediate solution, by which I mean easy, um, easy to come up with, but probably not beautiful. I can just end every pair, which how many pairs would that mean? Uh, goodness, I can't do for arithmetic in my head, let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six. I believe it's six pairs, right? So it will be six ends. I just end everything with everything. Every pair I end, and then I or the the result. Which I could do, but is that is that what they mean by don't overthink? Do you just go with this obvious solution? Or Do I do something more elegant? Maybe I'll give it I'll give it maybe a few minutes and I'll come back. Okay, so as always, I've just had a bright idea. Oh. <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not to mean I always have bright idea. Uh, it's just uh I'm saying the rule here is I don't do too much thinking of camera. It's been like two minutes, maybe, probably even less. And just the first, the first thing that came to mind, I think I can do or or, right? Oh, that's a triple or. I don't need a triple or. I just want a regular or. So I can or two and two, and then end that. So that's, I think that's also going to work, and that actually seems much, much more elegant. No? Do you agree? So this is, this is actually counting, pretty much. So, or, or, and, and, output. I don't like how you're misaligned. Uh, well, this is aligned, but not, not fully. Oh well, let's say let's say that's. So is this? I think that's probably the best I'm gonna be able to do. Uh, let's let's check that it actually works. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, it does not work. Why? Aha! See. That's the problem. That's the problem. But it it works. I would expect it to work in most cases. Yeah, it just doesn't work in these two. And my ores are wrong. 
So what happens if I add another ore? Will that break things? Any two. What happens if I add another ore and use a triple end? Well, let's let's see. Let's just experiment, I guess. Wait, I thought I had the triple end. No. Can I do a triple ore, perhaps? No, but a triple ore won't. won't. I wonder. So, let's, I wonder if maybe I could do something like a two triple ores. So a triple ore and a triple ore. Am I already overthinking this? And just uh, do two overlapping sets of ores, right? Like this, and then uh, let's connect like so and like so right with that would that be would that be correct so if anything this is probably too lenient is it um not sure not sure let's experiment let's experiment i'm also not ent entirely sure if you're supposed to experiment or if you're supposed to come up with a solution that you actually expect to work immediately you know like uh, analytically figure it out and then just solve or if you're supposed to do the, what i'm doing right now yeah, so this is broken for some reason. Oh, yeah, of course, because if any one input goes into two ores, <laughs> of course I'm gonna go... Of course I'm gonna... Of course it's gonna break things. Hmm. Okay, so that's... That's, that's not gonna work. What was up? So... This or this? Ah. Okay, I'm taking another time out. So, okay, I've done... It's been... Uh, noticeably longer amount of time than the previous times I've paused. And I do not really have any good ideas anymore. Because if, if you have... Obviously, if you have a single input going into multiple ores at the start, that's not gonna work as we've established. And also... If if I were to just start with ores, uh, I wouldn't be able to avoid this situation, right? To to kind of get to the result. Ah, uh, I'm not explaining this well, and also I don't have a particularly great understanding of it myself. Uh, but basically, anyways, uh, I think. At this point, I am entering overthinking territory, which they warned me about. Where? Over here? Don't overthink this level. So I'm just gonna go with what I really expect to work. I'm gonna go with a huge array of everything, of every possible combination. So, I think it was six, right? So, oh, this is... See, this is going to be huge. This is going to be huge and dif difficult to deal with. Difficult to plan. So one, two. Let's do one, three. And one, four. And let's also do two, three. And two, four. 
And let's do three, four, like so. Yeah, see, this is, I would have preferred to avoid this, uh, but I can't really come up with a better solution, to be honest. So the plan is at least I build this for now. I check that it actually works, because if it turns out that this doesn't work, then I'm in trouble. Um, but yeah, I, I really expect this to work. Right now, just over everything, and we test. Yep, it's all good. It's all good. It's all working. But perhaps taking a quick look at this and thinking of maybe some ideas inspired by it could help me out. I would like to rearrange these ends in a more symmetrical fashion. But yeah, this is a, I'm not happy with this one. I'm not happy with this one at all. And this one is not well, did not go well. Hmm. Could, could, could this be improved? Could this be improved? They say, you know, I just, I just keep going back to the word at least, right? At least two, which suggests a kind of or structure. But I need to remove, I need to remove all situations in which it is just one glowing, right? So I can add ores to the end as much as I want, but at some point I need to bar a triple negative. Perhaps, perhaps that's, perhaps that's an idea. What, what unique properties does a triple negative have? I'll, I'll have a couple more minutes to think about this and I'll come back. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't seem like I'm gonna come up with anything. Uh, this is this is frustrating because I f I really feel like I maybe could, <laughs> but <laughs> I just can't. Um, thing is, it it really feels like k k kind of like arithmetic in that. I can keep adding as much as I want. I just need I just need to detect the second one and you know or I can I can chain as many ores and just keep the input piling on. But it's just not coming to me. I just I don't know how to how to make this more elegant. Perhaps I should look up the solution. Should I, should I do that? And should I include that in the video? Because there is an option here. Do I want to view the solution? I'm going to, I'm going to go to the website and see if they recommend that. I'm not right here. I'm not chasing the optimal uh, strategy globally. I'm not, I'm not trying to beat the high score of the coolest internet kid. But I am just interested in how to optimize my own insane creation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up and I'll be back. Alright. I looked up the solution and they have it exactly the same as me. At least I I didn't watch to the end, but yeah, they had the six ends. Although they didn't make it much prettier, which actually I wanna repeat now. Uh and I am going to. I'll just have. So the, the way they did it is they made a bunch of vertical things like this. And this is already starting to resemble a circuit board, isn't it? Right? That's cool, isn't it? And then you you can 
Oh, I think I think you see where this this is going. Can I do Control C Control V? Cool. I can do Control C Control V, which means I could do this. Cool. And so now, what you can do is oh, it's 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 still it's still awkward. Yeah, one and two. I'm connecting. I'm connecting. Well, this is going to be four and but. Uh, Four and the three, but it doesn't matter. One and two, we're gonna go in reverse order. I wanna do one and three. And I wanna do one and four. See? And then I'm gonna do two and three. And then I'm gonna do two and four. And actually, I wanna go a bit higher. Something like this. Right, and this one just goes uh, three, four. Actually, let's do three and four. Yeah, see, so this is this looks this looks much nicer. And then we can uh, how do I or this? <laughs> I mean, I could I could or it the same way, but uh, I don't think that's necessary. Where's my ore? Ore, and another ore like that, and then just a regular ore. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Hmm. How do I make it look? <laughs> yeah, I want to make my circ. I want to make my circuit pretty. Sure, whatever. Whatever. We're good. Cool. GG. That's the level complete. Onwards. Finally, odd number of signals unlocks something unknown. Ooh, this sounds difficult. Odd number of signals. Using a maximum of three components. Output green only when an odd number of inputs are green. This level has a hint you can use if you get stuck. Okay, cool. I would like to avoid using hints for now. So, odd number. That is a lot more like addition. In fact, this literally is addition, except you only have one space in binary. Right, anything that gets carried over, it just, just wraps around, it's just overflow. But three components? Three components, huh? Is... All right. Okay. I'm taking some time to think. All right. Quick update. I just, I'm, I just, I just want to lay out all of my thinking. Uh, so right now, I, my idea is probably I don't want to use uh, the standard air quotes. Um gates of and and or and i think it's probably going to be some combination of you know nand xor nand nor you know two into nand two into nand and then nor that but i'm not sure what exactly i need some some time to consider that so i'll be back see here's here's the thing i don't that's that's the same thing that the same issue that was plaguing me in the previous uh, challenge. It's that I need to combine these four inputs symmetrically, right? So it shouldn't matter which input is which. You can re reorder them, rearrange them in any way, uh, and 
the result should stay the same. That was true of the previous challenge, and it is true of this one. And I think that's actually an important realization that uh, I needed symmetric. However, by, by connecting them in twos, I cannot achieve achieve symmetry because there is still, you know, there's uh, still these two, and there's still these two, which are distinct. In I don't know how to exactly explain this. Uh, uh, I mean, I think the idea is clear enough, but. You have two pairs and you have two unpairs. These are unpaired, as are these. And by switching up the inputs, these paired and unpaired instances can... Uh, flip. Actually, there's, there's more unpaired stuff. Uh, there's also like this plus this. All sorts. But yeah, I'll... I'll give it some more time and be back. Again, symmetry. Symmetry is important. So, again, thinking about symmetry, if I go back to my whiteboard, you can imagine I have uh, inputs. Well, I don't need to imagine. I do have inputs one, two, three, and four, right? And assume I pair them up. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter what numbers I pair with what. So let's say, uh, for the sake of uh, symmetry, it doesn't it doesn't matter which ones are which. But let's say I pair them them like one two two three three four. And I'm not thinking about uh, which gate I put them into, other than I have a triple end, which might be part of the solution here. But we'll see. Um, I I wouldn't expect that. So if I pair them up like this. One, two, two, three, three, four, and say I substitute uh, one and three. I, I swap places one and three, right? I will get three, two, right? Or right, let's do two, three. Two, three will turn into one, two, and three, four will be, will be one, four, right? And having substituted this, I still have the pair one, two, I still have the pair 2, 3, but I no longer have the pair 3, 4. It now turned into 1, 4. And what I need is I need the property that it doesn't change. The, the set of pairs should stay the same. This is the symmetry I'm talking about. This is the... Um, I don't know the word. There's, there's a mathematical notion for this, but I don't know the word for it in English. You know, the generality of independent variable renaming, whatever. Um, so, the same, the same, of course, goes for double pairings. One, two, three, four. Right? Then I will have two, three, and one, four, which is even worse. Right? This is one substituted for three, or swap three. <laughs> There's an arrow here, like this. <laughs> so I'm really not sure, but I'll give it. I'll give it more thought still. And I'll be back. Oh, I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I think I think I figured it out. Uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. Uh, you must have been screaming at the screen watching me struggle with this. But of course, XOR literally does what I need, right? If we take a look at XOR, it actually does addition. On a single bit so all I need to do is just add these up 
right? So it's it's as simple as that. Uh, I'm not. I I haven't uh, really considered how many inputs this will require, but I expect I expect it all to match up perfectly, just because I was told that uh, I'm only allowed three. Yeah, see, it's no problem. And this is this is the solution. It's it's just it's as simple as that. So you just have a cascade, and yeah, that's literally addition. Um, would you call this long addition or something? I don't know, but I expect this to work. Let's check. Yep. Cool. Again, I'm not sure how much I should try to explain things. Um, I am not that good of an explainer, especially in English. But yeah, maybe I should go back to my um, musings about symmetry and consider how this looks for symmetry. Because I still think this should be symmetric, even in this kind of uh, paradigm with uh, swaps. So let's say, how do I even, how would I even, what, what, what way would I even display this as what, what would be a model? I have one and two, then I have three with one, two. And I have four with one, two, three. Let's let's try. Let's try that. Let's just try it this way. Okay, this whiteboard is it is actually infinite, so I have one times two. Oh. <laughs> I mean it's actually one plus two. And then I have uh one plus two plus three, right? And then I have one plus two plus three plus four. Uh, so this is the actual end formula that I have. And of course, by associativity of addition, this is just one plus two plus three plus four. Which means, obviously, substituting 1 for 3 will not change the result by commutativity. And of course, XOR, this does mean that XOR being plus, XOR is both commutative and associative. So, X, XOR, Y. XOR Z equals X XOR Y XOR Z. This would be associativity. And then we have X XOR Y equals Y XOR Z. Is XOR? I wonder if XOR is also reflexive in some way. X, X, XOR, X. Yeah, X, XOR, X will provide me with an off. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, X, XOR, X is off. All right. Let's continue. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. Onwards. What did I unlock? Wire comments. That's helpful. Yes. Wire color. Yes. These are both helpful. Thank you. Half adder counting signals. 
again, counting signals unlocks something as well as a manual entry. So I think I would, I should probably rather start with the thing that doesn't unlock. And I'm going to go for memory later. So let's try a half adder. Okay, we're moving on to proper zeros and ones now. I am now... We measure the universe with numbers, so your machine must learn to count. How's that elephant doing, by the way? Is the elephant keeping, keeping up still? Treat the inputs as zero and one, depending... Yes, of course, sure. As with normal addition, if the result cannot be described with one digit, Set the carry to one. Oh, I have. Would you look at that? I have uh, multiple outputs now. But having completed the previous one, I now know that the sum is XOR. I don't think there's an easier way to do this. It's, it's literally one gate. However, I also need a carry. Which would really be an end. I can just use an end as my carry. No? Just like this. I'm pretty sure this should work. And without overthinking things. There's there's no way I'm getting this in one gate, right? And two gates is <laughs> as good as you can do above one All right so i expect the solution to be perfect full adder or counting signals you know what let's do a full adder first while we're on addition in the previous level we added together two inputs this time we add three once again add the inputs together in binary such that the result is either zero or one as with normal addition if the result cannot be described with one digit, set the carry to one. Wait, that's a little bit awkward because... See, with three digits, I can have a sum that is larger than... than... Um, what? Than, than two. Which, which means I can have a two-digit sum, right? So this, uh, or for example, wait, wait, excuse me. This truth table is not. Oh, it's three inputs. It's three inputs. Sorry. No, but still, uh, over here, at the very end. I have, um, let's go to the whiteboard. I have one plus one plus one. And really, that is one one. In binary, that's three. And then the carry is zero, right? Zero, I, I don't know how to, what the notation for this is, the proper notation. Maybe I should go and look that up. But, yeah, and uh, that's why I'm slightly confused by a single register for the output. So I just output uh, the final digit, or the least significant digit, right, is what they're asking of me. They're not asking of, well, yeah, so I, should, I should be able to carry. Okay, let's see. Let's see, so we know how to add three numbers. That we know. We know how to add three numbers. Uh, but I'm not sure. How do I even arrange this neatly? How do I? Do I go for the fancy Layout already? Or is it not time yet? Come on, what are you doing? Alright. 
whatever. Uh, so let's do XOR, XOR, XOR. This is going to be my result. What am I? Wait, what am I doing? Wait, I was adding, I was adding three numbers. This time, uh, two XORs is enough. So this is the result. Let's check. I don't care about the carry. I care about the desired sum. So sum zero zero one 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 zero zero one one zero 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 one one. Cool. Now let's consider the carry. Wait. Is the sum still correct here? Yeah, the sums actually looks correct. All right. So now I know how to do. Goodness, this is complicated. Again, I think I'm confusing myself more than necessary. All right, give me some time and I'll be back. Okay, intermediate update. Um, just by the intuition of addition and by what carry is, I think, I think, this construction might not actually be optimal. I mean, of, of course, I, I'm pretty sure I could just uh, build a separate thing that would emulate the carry that down here that that will work for the sum but considering the fact that really uh the way you obtain uh although actually no that's not right i was gonna say uh generally in order to get the actual final result of an addition you need to use the carry in your next edition Right, at the next step, you, you need to apply the carry. But because we're not pushing uh, more significant digits, right, because we only care about the least significant digit, this one, we don't actually care about the carry to calculate everything else. Right, so this one just flips every time. Just every, every, every one you add the significant digits uh, lips so i think this xor construction is correct after all and then i just need some way to calculate the carry for three additions so i know how to calculate the carry for one or for for one pair how do i carry with the carry could it be so let's let's see i think this i think i don't need to take a pause here i know that the carry of two numbers oops it's the wrong end i know that the carry of two numbers is an end of them right but also what am i doing if i have my fancy goodness if i have my fancy fancy setup so the carry, the carry of these two is end. And now I need to incorporate the third one in here. What is it? If I have... If I have... If I already have a carry here. So, you know, you know what I'm going to do? Oops. Sorry. Uh, I might build a truth table of the carry. So, let's see. We have the output of one, two. Let's call them XY. 
And then we have a Z. Do I not just add them? I think I just add them. I think I just add the value to the carry. I just use an XOR here. So if I have X, Y, no carry or some carry, then if Z is, what am I even doing? Yeah, no, this should be fine. Z zero. Let's let's do it the other way around. So zero zero one one zero one zero one. I can't do even tables in here, but that's fine. Um, right. So nothing here. No carry. Something carry. Something carry. And then if I have, if I already had a carry and then I added something and I don't need to carry, right? The carry is, yeah, so this is just XOR. So let's add an XOR in here. And come on, I wanna, I'm gonna make it pretty. Yeah, like so. Actually, that's not... A, it's not entirely pretty. This is pretty. <laughs> Sorry. This is... I, I, I understand this is completely unnecessary, but... It's just... It's... All right. And then this is my carry. I hope this is right. Let's test. So all zeros were fine. Already wrong. What's wrong? What is wrong? The sum is correct. Is this connected correctly? Yes. And am I ending and XORing the right things? Yes, I am. So I have, see, I have added up here with XOR, I added up input two and three. And again, with an end, why is this wrong then? Okay, let's, uh... no, 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 don't rerun everything. Show me the wrong one. So we have one input. Oh, my one input gets carried over with XOR. That's not right. But why? What's wrong with my truth table then? I have... I know this is not... <laughs> this does not look remotely like a table. There's... I think Excalidraw, which is this app, really lacks a way to make nice tables. I think they should add it. I think it would be very nice if they added a way to make actual tables. So what's the problem here? We are currently in the situation where X, Y is zero and Z is one. Oh, I don't need to carry this over because it's actually added. All right, so this one goes into addition. This one goes into addition and then we're fine. Oh, oh no. Oh no, this complicates things, right? This complicates things a lot. Because I, I want this to only flow one way. If possible, I want it to flow into the XOR, into addition. And if addition is full, then I want it to flow into here. How could I simulate that? My goodness, this is... Wow, okay, I'm taking 
I'm taking a pause. I need some time to consider this. So, an, a relatively, relatively obvious way to do this, and it's actually something I have already been thinking about in the previous segment, uh, is I can detect that there's a zero here, right? And then deny this if there's a zero. So something like this is a zero and I needed to zero out this. So I can put an end, I can put another end down here. Where's my end? Something like, like this. See? Ah, goodness. Um, still not used to the control scheme of this jam. Yeah, so. Something along these lines, I think might work. Right, so the only way, the only way this thing gets carried over is if there was already a sum. So let's, let's, let's check this. It's working. Five component full adder. Complete the full adder level using, using what? Was it, did it say only five components? I didn't quite catch that. Not gonna go. So does this mean my solution is relatively good? That I would I would be happy with that. This does this is pretty intuitive, right? We have we have this carryover. Uh, oh, wait. No, I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say I got it but not exactly so yeah scaling this up I think I think I think I have uh, the basic idea for this uh, again because this is addition an addition is so is this does this have to do with associativity I think I think this is because it addition is associative right uh, yeah, yeah, addition, because addition is associative, scaling this up just means adding more layers of the same thing. So I had, I had this, I had a, um, let's, you know what, I'm gonna go, uh, this is, this is gonna be the, the, the last thing I do for this video because I, I realize it's already pretty long. Um, yeah, I don't really need to say this. This can be removed. So let's call our addition. Let's call our addition. No. So this is going to be add, right? And it has, it has two inputs, right? Whatever. And it has two outputs. No, this is, uh, it's not worth using straight lines for this. So it has two inputs and two outputs. And this one is going to be uh, sum. This one is going to be carry. Right. But now if I add another input, goodness, if I add another input, I can take the add I can add, no, I don't. So I add, it's weird because now I have, now I have these three things. I have three inputs. It's not, it doesn't seem to be possible to express what I want to express with just add blocks. 
but let's let's consider is there is there something I could add in between like an or gate or something in order to have this work so of course I'm gonna be adding well you know what I'm adding this and I'm adding this I'm adding some in this however I get this is this is my final sum right this is my final sum final sum uh, or not not final sum but it's still it's still intermediate because I'm I do intend on adding more inputs however however uh, this carry there's two carries and they also get added yeah that's that's what happens uh, except well for me they're not added they are XORed because I only care about the digits for now but yeah so we have XOR here XOR I, I understand this schematic is pretty shitty carry Right, and then uh, my output is the actual carry, and then I repeat again. Then, I, then I repeat. I add. If I add another, if I add another, I can just use the same thing. Right, I can add this and that. I can add this and this. This will be the sum. And then the carry, again, will flip as necessary with an XOR. Oh, goodness. Um, why did I not make this full screen? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, so we have this carry. These two enter the XOR. And this is, again, my carry. So I have this kind of cascade with which I can add X plus Y plus Z plus, of course, we ran out of letters. So let's go for A. I think this is right. I think this is right. And this is what I this is this is basically what I built, right? I have this Yeah, so my addition is XOR and end. And then I add another addition. This is XOR and end. Right? That's the same addition. This is my add block. However, now to my carry, I add the previous carry via an XOR in order to combine them. So that's what I was doing here with this XOR. So this is this is that scheme except uh, my add add equals and XOR plus end. Cool. All right. Cool. 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 Anyways, that'll be it for now. We have actually exhausted, it looks like, the current arithmetic line. And we can go on to counting signals and... Oh, so this looks like addition, and then we're gonna proceed with multiplication. Or something to that effect. We'll see. <laughs>